Southwest Florida, welcome back to Lee Pitts Live. You're probably saying, where in the world is Lee Pitts Live? On Fox 4, I'm where I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be at the Florida Repertory Theater, located in the Arcade Theater, downtown Fort Myers, and I think this is Bay Street? Yep, between Bay, Bay and First. And I'm supposed to be at Fences, August Wilson's Fences, one of the great American plays, a part of the series that we'll get to learn all about with my friend here, Greg, who's a director here now at the Florida Rep. Fences is here, a, one, a predominantly black cast, an award-winning, postal award-winning, Tony Award-winning play. is right here in Fort Myers, gonna be here at least until January the 30th. So let's get to get more details on it. First of all, welcome to the show, Greg. Hey, thanks a lot, Lee. Great to be here. Greg, give me your full name and title. I want everybody to know you. I'm Greg Longenhagen, and I am the artistic director of the Florida Repertory Theater. What does artistic director mean in the theater world? In the theater world, the artistic director oversees everything that happens on the stage. So uh, a lot of producing that happens uh, in the theater kind of falls under the artistic director's position. But uh, the choice of the plays, the choice of the actors, the choice of the uh, designers that come in and work at the theater, and basically anything that happens on the stages at the theater comes under the umbrella of the artistic director's Now, job. based on the way you described it, that sounds like one of the most important people in the whole ensemble of things at a, at a, at a, at a theater. It, it is, it is. I, I, You're you, the guy at the top, essentially. Yeah, yeah, I, I pretty much am. I am the guy at the top, yeah. Now we have a- He's the CEO. Okay, the artistic <laughs> yeah. director, in other words, is the CEO at a theater, go ahead. That's true, that's true. Now there's a, there's a managing director at this theater and also an artistic director at this theater. Okay. The managing director usually handles the, the money stuff and kind of looks okay what are our expenses what's our budget taking care of that stuff whereas the artistic director does almost everything else on the artistic side outstanding now uh, you uh, in your your group have done an outstanding job people have been seeing it on my television show already they've seen various interviews that I've done including with the director of the play Benny along with your assistant artistic director Jay giving you a plug uh, to promote August Wilson's Fences. I'm excited about it, the community is excited about it. Tell us about the genesis of conceiving the idea of bringing Fences here and then now getting it here. Well, I can tell you this, uh, the theater has been wanting to do an August Wilson play for some time now, and I don't even know how long that goes back. I joined the company uh, recently, just in October, so the season that we have on the play right now was all decided before I came on board. But I can tell you that uh, it's a real coup for us to get this play. Uh, it, August Wilson is uh, arguably one of the greatest American writers. He's a poet, a master of, of the stage, and uh, we are so, so excited to have this play playing in our space and the cast that we have assembled. Uh, you mentioned him before, Lee Benny. Sato Ambush is a, is a phenomenal stage director. He's worked everywhere and has a huge career behind him. Um, and we are just so, so pleased to, uh, to be presenting this. Outstanding. Now, uh, we'll come back to the play, but I want to establish the setting. Right now, we're in the lobby just before the reception start for the opening of the play here on uh, January the 11th. Tell us th the setting, explain to people and what's gonna happen tonight. Okay, so uh, the play is set in the 1950s and like almost every August Wilson play, it's set in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. That's where August Wilson grew up. Now, not just in Pittsburgh, but a very specific neighborhood called the Hill District, okay? That's still there. The Hill ah. District is still very much alive in, in Pittsburgh. So, Steel Town. Mm -hmm, you got it. So, this play takes place in that neighborhood in Pittsburgh in the 1950s, and the center uh, focus of the story is the character of Troy, Troy Maxson. Troy Maxson was a phenomenal baseball player. He played in the Negro Baseball Leagues, uh, which uh, Pittsburgh was one of the uh, great areas for. I mean, it was a, uh, uh, Homestead uh, Reds would or the Homestead the Grays. Would that be 1940s? Yes, because what happened, Lee, is he played in that league. He was very good. He went off to go fight in World War II. When he came back from World War II, he was too old to play. That's, mm. yeah, so he's two play, and, and it was, he, he started to play baseball and was involved in baseball before the color barrier was broken. So he, did, he never had his big shot in the major leagues. And a lot of that is a through line through the story that you're gonna see tonight. And this play has gotten rave reviews here 
and has gotten rave reviews around the world, hasn't it? Absolutely, yeah. In fact, the uh, production of this was just done, I want to say, last season uh, on Broadway. It was a limited run with Denzel Washington, and he played the role of Troy Max. Viola Davis. And Viola Davis, mm. yep. Viola Davis played Rose, and uh, they subsequently made a film uh, after they did the run on Broadway. I'm sure they were working on it at the same time, but it ran after the show closed, I believe, but it was a I huge hit. Film. You did. And a lot yeah. of people are familiar from the film, but this is live theater, mm. and remember, Remember, this play happened before the film. This play goes back. Yeah. Uh, what, what year did this play go back? This to? play, I want to. I think that he wrote this in the early '80s. I okay. want to say '82. Okay. It's one of his earlier plays. James Earl Jones was in the starring role. That's right. James Earl Jones originally played this. Uh, it was a Tony winner uh, that year when it opened on Broadway. Uh, obviously, we mentioned earlier in the broadcast he's a Pulitzer Prize winner for this play, and it's part of what's called the American Century Cycle. One of the interesting things that August Wilson did is he took a a century in American history and he depicted the African American stories that happened uh, for each specific century. So every one of his plays, every single one of them depicts a very specific time in American history. That's outstanding. He seems to take his time in his storytelling process just from what I've seen. Uh, I've seen the movie. I haven't seen it in theater yet. I'm excited about going inside and sitting in theater. And uh, also excited about Lee Pitts Live on Fox 4 being the media sponsor for this event and bringing out a crowd that's also going to enjoy live theater. Yeah. You know, Lee, you bring up something really important. Uh, the type of, of material that August Wilson writes, and, and uh, he, again, arguably one of the greatest American writers, uh, of the, certainly of the last 150 years. Uh, we lost him back in 2005, but his plays live on. His style of writing is, is something that you could, uh, you could liken him to a Tennessee Williams ah, or, yep, or, or an Arthur Miller. The, the greats. The greats. The style is, is, is uh, a style called poetic realism. And the, the language of the play, the story is phenomenal, but the language of the play works on you. It'll work on you in a very, very special way. And, and it's, it's, so, it's so beautifully written. It's one of those pieces that for me, I get emotional every time I see it, but I get emotional at different times. And I, I can, I, how I feel, how I can um, uh, describe the, the beautiful fabric of a play is that if I'm sitting there and I'm watching the play, and I'm so drawn into the play, and I find myself weeping, but I don't know when I started to cry, or really specifically what it was that made me do that. August Wilson's plays have that power. And what you need to know is that this play will be running at the Arcade Theater here in downtown Fort Myers, especially for you people who are listening to us in Sarasota, DeSoto County, Henry County, Glaze, Carl, all that. It's right here in Fort Myers, and it'll start, uh, it started January the 8th, and it'll go through January the 30th. Um, when people come out of the play, what do you hope that they would have taken with them? I would hope that they would take with them a, 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 a feeling of trans, being transported, that they were transported back to a different time, that they were transported to a different place, mm. but that they, uh, coming out of it, that they are awash in the beautiful language uh, that they were entreated to for the last two, two hours, two and a half hours. This uh, repertory theater is renowned not only here locally but nationally. You received some awards. I think it was the Wall Street Journal. Talk, speak to that. Yeah, the Wall Street Journal has uh, reviewed us. I don't even know. I want to say ten times we've had reviews in the Wall Street Journal. Um, rave reviews for every one of them. And um, I think it has a lot to do uh, with our popularity. When you have a national newspaper comes and they write a, a wonderful review, but not just one. Mm -hmm. I believe it was ten reviews from the Wall Street Journal. Now, for a small a town as small as Fort Myers in downtown, it has come alive and largely due to this theater becoming what it became because you located here uh, long before downtown was the bustering river district that it is now. So I want to compliment the Florida Repertory Theater for being a contributor to the, the, the great development of downtown Fort Myers. Thank you for that, Lee. Yep. Um, when people come here, sure there's a play to, uh, in January, but tell us other some high points of other things that are on the docket that they may participate in during this 
the during this season. Sure. So uh, running um, concurrently with this play is another play called Tenderly, the Rosemary Clooney musical, and it's actually Lee in our uh, studio space just down the hall. Okay. That's a much smaller space that seats about 110. We can kind of change that configuration I like to, that. to no, whatever. It's cozy. We, it is cozy. It's mm -hmm. very cozy in there. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is um, it's a it's a retrospective about uh, the singer, actor, entertainer Rosemary Clooney and her life and her battles and struggles with the different things that happened with I gotta her take life. that in when's yeah, that starting that, you know that started um, I'm trying to think of our opening date but it's actually running tonight so there will be okay. some people here uh, uh, February 24th yeah there'll right. be people here in our hall it runs until the 24th February uh, that's plenty of time people yeah yeah so they'll be they'll both be kind of making their way through the hallway tonight for all the information on the Florida Repertory Theater, you can go to floridarep.org. Yes, floridarep.org. And uh, just, just you can shop there, purchase tickets online, the, the works. You, if you're not here for August Wilson's Fences, which I know you're not if you're looking at me sitting at home, be sure to put it on your schedule. Uh, get all the details at the website. It'll be here through January the 30th. I want to thank you for coming here stopping in, my friend. Thank you, Lee. Looking forward to opening night, not premiere in the theaters. It's called opening night. I've learned all of that in this short period of time. We're so glad to have Lee Piss Live associated with such a fine organization as the Florida Repertory Theater. We'll be right back.